Hey guys, so a couple of you have asked me about this instrument that I play on some of my covers. Uh, I think I've been using it since my fourth cover, uh, which was The Price of Freedom from Final Fantasy Crisis Core. And um, <clears throat> people want to know what it is, what it's called, and how it's tuned. So what it is, uh, what it's called here, in fact, is uh, the Irish Buzuki. It's got a few different names, in fact, depending on who you ask, where they're from, and, and uh, what usage they've had for it. But um, the story goes this way. Um, um, Celtic, especially Irish Celtic folk musicians, in the late 60s and early 70s, traveled a lot around the world. And some of them, uh, guys like uh, um, Andy Irvine, and uh, Alec Finn, who actually I've played with and lived not far from me at all actually, um, traveled to the Balkans um, and to places like Greece. And some of them brought instruments with them. But those two guys brought uh, uh, Greek bazookis, <coughs> which were rounded backs, flat tops, and brought them back and incorporated those instruments and sounds into Irish music um, and Celtic folk music, I would say. Um, until these instruments broke and uh, they asked their local uh, makers to, um, to replace them. Now the local makers didn't necessarily know how to make round backs or want to or probably more likely um, sort of realize that um, uh, the round back wasn't necessarily needed. Uh, what they needed to play in sessions, especially in live sessions in pubs, was a big body uh, like a mandolin uh, or, or sitting and uh, or lute, sorry. Uh, very very wide body and uh, flat back uh, just to enhance that, that volume um, so they started making those instruments very much uh, very much like these Peter Abnett I think was the first one that uh, sort of developed the concept and he used the, the shape of the uh, teardrop pear shape uh, mandolin um, to make this instrument so it's a, it's a relatively new instrument um, and it's tuned very much like a banjo or a mandolin. Uh, in fact, it's tuned very much like a banjo uh, in, in fifth. The mandolin is the same, just an octave higher, but um, the banjo would be tuned this way, G, D, A, E, and the mandolin an octave higher would be this. If I use the mandolin here, you can see. There you go. So, um, the tuning is pretty much the same. Now, <coughs> This is used mostly for accompaniment. Some people play tunes with it. Um, I personally play accompaniment with it, and I use an open tuning uh, uh, for this. So it's not G D A E, it's G D A D. So what it allows me to do is get big, beautiful, wide, open chords, or just just very, very uh, gentle, like uh, like chords for accompaniment. Um, and this is pretty much it. I, I like using it because it fills that gap between the um, the, the sound of the mandolin and uh, and the banjo, and uh, it gives me um, it gives me very long st uh, strings, very very uh, long sounding, uh, sustained type of sound. Um, the banjo is very much uh, one short burst of uh, of attack, and then it's gone after that. It fades very quickly, and the mandolin sustains a bit, but because it's higher octave, the the note doesn't stay for that long. So um, this is actually perfect because of the body, it just... You can keep that going for a long time. So uh, I use it whenever I need to sort of replicate the sound of violins, for example, or, or just very long strings. Um, and it's really cool. So um, the way to I play this, kind of rambling here, but typically it's because it's open tuning, you play it with a, a, a capo, wherever the tuning is. And you kind of change it on the fly, but and um, these are set keys that you use. So you have your 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 tone key, which would be typically in, in D. Or G. Um, you can play A like that, but typically you just use one or two position and just use a capo to just transpose them. So, uh, and then the type of accompaniment can range from chords, big white chords with a lot of percussive sound. Or 
gorgeous, very light, lightly strum, kind of single or double string. And, uh, and anything in between, really. So um, there you go, the Irish bazooki. Uh, it's actually the instrument I play a lot and mostly in Irish music and in sessions. I've been playing this for, well this is very instrument I've, uh, I've got made, uh, actually custom made in 1988, I think. Uh, no, sorry, 1998. And uh, uh, 1999, I'm sorry. And um, uh, by a maker in, uh, in Galway called Paul Doyle. Um, and before that I had just instruments that I bought off the shelf pretty much but I've been playing this for a very very long time in fact I've been playing this longer than I've been playing the banjo uh, even though I started the banjo earlier I, uh, I switched to this very very early on and uh, sort of left the banjo aside for probably 10 years maybe more so there you go the Irish bazooki I'm gonna see if I can dig uh, one of my uh, my uh, videos of me playing at a music festival back in 2006 or 7 uh, where I still played a lot of Celtic music and it'll give you an idea of what the, uh, the it sounds like, what type of context it's used in and uh, what type of chords and accompaniment you, uh, you do with it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's not uh, video game related, it's, it's purely uh, folk and Celtic uh, and uh, it's uh, Irish music. Enjoy!